This is Rudy Chevaria for College Web Mentor, a College Web Media production. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing self-taught watercolor artist and entrepreneur, Jeff Pasquale. Jeff started Pasquale Productions based in Orange County, California in March, 2012. He sells a variety of watercolor artwork in the form of originals, art prints, and t-shirts. Along with his presence online, you can also find Jeff at a number of comic and anime conventions across the United States. His unique art style can be described as loose, messy, and twisted when depicting characters. Aside from his passion for art, Jeff also enjoys collecting watches, fishing, billiards, ping pong, video games, photography, and basically anything that pushes him to compete. This interview was recorded in Jeff's studio in January 2017. This interview is brought to you by Shonen Entertainment, 20th Century Fox film, War of the Planet of the Apes, in theaters July 14th, 2017. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. I know everybody can look you up, read about you, being that it's 2017, New Year. Can we talk about what exactly in 2016 changed your artwork and your outlook on what it is you're doing as an artist and as an entrepreneur? That's actually a really good question for 2016 specifically, just because during that year where I developed most as an artist, it was the year where we were being really successful. We were selling a lot. We were going to a lot of conventions. I transitioned to full time and I was in like business mode. For an artist, being in business mode is not good for a development. Just learning that it's okay to change, it's okay to grow, it, it's okay to uh, not try to stick to one thing. As an artist, that like ideology kind of helped me grow and change, kind of be a better artist. Whereas the business side of me was, we found the success on the artwork that I have from the past two years, and so I should stick to that because it's a good thing. So I was copying myself from two years ago, which is not good at all. Why is that? In the book that you gave me, one of the quotes, my favorite one is from Picasso. He just said, it's dangerous to copy others as an artist, but it's even more dangerous to copy yourself because you're just holding yourself back and you'll never grow. And so I was holding myself back in that I was copying myself because that's where I found my success. But in order to grow and develop as an artist, uh, I need to kind of like let go of that and let that be that time period and then move on and experiment and grow and be the artist that I am in 2016, 2017. It's scary at the same time because we have this foundation that's built upon my previous successes and experiments. So I kind of want to stay safe and stick with that. Mm. But the artist in me is actually trying to experiment and get out and try new things and change. Is there one moment where anyone, as far as a fan, said anything to you in 2016 that made you turn in a different direction? No, honestly. <laughs> it, it's more internal. It's like an internal struggle. As an artist, I'm very um, self-reflective, like introspective and self-critical. Mm -hmm. And so when I created these artworks, kind of holding myself back and trying to stick with that safe spot, it would feel really unnatural when I was creating because I was putting restrictions on myself, trying to copy myself from a year ago. Mm. And you could see it visually. There's something like not right. Mm. I told myself, follow wherever my natural and artistic tendencies go to. That's what prompted me to stay true to my creative influences. So it's watercolor for you. Yeah. You think you'll ever try something different? Talk about 2017. 2017, probably not. Just because uh, watercolor is really difficult. I find like endless amount of entertainment through it. I don't think I will transition to really anything else in 2017. I picked up photography for a little bit. I just use it as like a side thing, channel my like creative build up mm. when I'm traveling or when I'm on the go or something where I create, but <clears throat> I'm not like in the studio to create a painting. So I go and take snapshots and edit them. And it carries over to my watercolor. Certain aspects from different uh, <laughs> mediums, like digital, like oil, photography, even music, they carry over across like different mediums. For example, photography, you get a lot of like composition and lighting and color and value out of easily but with watercolor I mean you have to create that yourself but with photography you're more observing what's already there and mm. kind of picking and choosing what you're given but with watercolor you have to start with a blank sheet of paper given that reference from photography you can get a better idea of what you want to create and, and it helps a lot actually let's talk about you as an entrepreneur is there anything that you learned as an entrepreneurship major that you were actually applying to your business I always say operations just because it seems the most logical in operations we learned the bottleneck is what you want to focus your energy on in a process for example for yeah. example the sales channel through the conventions there's a lot of people so we need to get through them really fast or we're gonna lose sales we need to focus on the slowest process 
where they're looking, the last step where they're walking away with a print. So we focus on the slowest part of that and make it faster Which to is, improve the whole process. Yeah. For example, we would have a sale team of like two at the convention. Mm -hmm. If one person has the responsibility of like the taking the payment or talking to them, getting the print and packaging it and handing it to them, how are that split up between the two people? If one person has more of a load than the other and that person is consistently finishing after that person, then you just shift the responsibilities to the other person so that you have equal amount of work and they finish at the same time. It will improve the benchmark time Got that it. you would take to complete the transaction. So this way you're getting through more people. Yeah, which is really important. For the bigger convention, you a wall of people in front of the booth and each one of them is in a different step of the process, either looking at the artwork, asking us to get one, or we're already packaging it for them. But when it's like crunch time at the big conventions, you just need to go through them like really fast. Yeah. It's interesting to talk to you and, and hear you and watch you light up so much as an entrepreneur and businessman because we're sitting in your office and all around is your artwork and your, the process and even on the wall, it's, it's here, remember why you started. What advice would you give to a art student who is about to embark on a journey like you are? I'd say get out there. There's nothing that will help you grow more than actually putting it out there. And you learn that in, from like critiques from other people as well as business. They always say like lean startup, get it out there, mm. make sure there's proof right. of concept and get those critiques back and make it better. You won't get that unless you like step out of your room, show your artwork to other people, get that feedback that you need to grow. Is there any book, magazine, blog, anything that you read as an artist that you like to look at every day to keep you focused on what's going on in the art world? I browse Pinterest a lot. Mm -hmm. So I like or follow a certain um, artist or feed which posts like a lot of artwork that I get inspired by. Mm -hmm. And then on my feed it shows a lot of new stuff. Stuff. So it's it's really good for discovering new art and new paintings, pictures, anything that you're inspired by, and then you get to pin it and save it. So I have boards where I have it categorized in like different sections. So I have like a pose section, uh, like snapshots of people in like action or mm. reference drawings, and then I have another board uh, inspiration and what I like about the artwork, and then also like watercolor separated by medium. But it's a good site to look at new stuff. It's mm. kind of the site where I get inspiration visually but I have no idea like the names of the artists or where it comes from or anything it's just straight all pictures it seems like you make up your mind pretty quickly with things uh, for the listening audience Jaina his girlfriend and partner so you're nodding your head <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you make up your mind immediately when you see something or you're deciding on something in that process how did you get to that point where you just know this is actually interesting because it's something that I've learned in like 2016 going through that stage of insecurity with my artwork. How am I going to live up to the success that we've built for ourselves and how am I supposed to like be even better than that next year? Mm. One thing that I came to the conclusion of is just trusting your instincts. Mm. And so that's, I guess that's the, the confidence that I get in making decisions quickly is that we need to make decisions and move forward or else we're not going anywhere. And if we go in a direction that ends up being a mistake, I would rather take that mistake than actually be where we were like five years ago. We're not making any decisions at all. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you learn that at business school also is like fail and fail flat fast and to learn from it. Uh, I've got to ask Jaina here. Is there anything you'd like to say? Anything you'd like to add to um, what we've gone over for the past five, ten minutes here. <laughs> Basically, I also went to business school as well, majoring in marketing. In terms of things that I've applied to the business, it's a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say it's very helpful on my end also because I just, I mainly just focus on the business side of things and in marketing and also like entrepreneurship. I, I just remember that we would try to apply these these things. For example? For example. Business communications. I just yeah. rebought one of the textbooks <laughs> yeah. that we got in school. Really? Which one? Um, it's called Essentials of business, business Communication. It breaks it down by, I guess, genre of communication. So, like, if somebody's complaining, if somebody is, like, happy, if you're giving somebody good news, if you're give, giving somebody bad news, there's kind of, like, yeah. scenarios and templates to go off of. Hmm. Uh, so I thought that was really useful because we're dealing with customer messages, like, yeah. multiple times a day. And yeah. Jana does that. Yeah, so it's really useful because you don't want... You, there's someone who, let's say, is wanting a painting, but Jeff really doesn't have time to paint it. <laughs> like a commission. Like commission work. Yeah, there's oh, a commission get, work. Yeah, we get a lot of commission a lot, work. And we so have to turn down basically have to like 95% of, of them. them. 
So I have to <laughs> say in the best, happiest way while still keeping our customers happy. You yeah. Know? So um, that's brilliant, though. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to accept more of those once we build a bigger team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's talk about like, within 2017. I know that you want to build a bigger team, so this way you can get farther out in the United States and in the world. And how do you plan on doing that? What we've been doing is just kind of starting with people that we trust. So we're just starting with that, and then kind of seeing where that takes us as far as like. If we, ch if we made the right decision or not. What we've been focusing on just as much is trying to build a back-end mm -hmm. team, like at least one more person just to pick up a lot of the things that fall between the gaps of what we're doing. A lot of like website Busy stuff yeah. and filing stuff and just all, all these little things that kind of take up our time and take you away from what you need yeah. to do. Yeah, and ideally it would be somebody who is into art already just because I enjoy helping people out. Like I've helped out a lot of people last year just by them messaging me or talking to them at the convention, just helping them grow, I guess. And so it would be nice to have somebody to connect with on the creative level that I can help them as well as them helping me in the business so they could grow as well. Do you plan on implementing more of um, your own new character in 2017? I've had the urge lately to create my own characters and the environment that they live in just to get inspiration off of the single paintings that I do. During the conventions, people want fan art and so those are all derivative works and that's what people want. So original works won't live in that universe. It will never survive and it's always like sad to see people in the artist alley having original artwork and then mixed in with fan art and then seeing their fan art sell more and think their original stuff is crap <laughs> just because that's the market that is there and so, I'm, I'm sure that hurts <clears throat> their confidence yeah well i just it actually gives me more because i know that if i do introduce it to the um, convention scene and worst case scenario nobody buys anything i know it's okay because that's not what they're looking for but if i go into like a gallery setting where i show at certain galleries or art shows and that's the environment that i could see my original work flourishing a little bit right. because more people would be interested in what's in my head completely rather than just seeing something familiar in my style. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to do more original stuff and probably channeling that through more galleries and more solo shows and a lot more independent venues. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. This has been a College Web Media production, copyright 2017.